So I'm going to start this Mother's Day talk with throwing my mom under the bus because my mom, you know how some people really like to cook and they get a lot of, they, it good for them it's a creative endeavor and all of that. My mom is not one of those people. <laughs> my mom's the kind of person who cooked because people needed to eat. And so we would have probably about the same four-ish things on rotation <laughs> when I was in those preteen years when I was growing an inch a month you know I mean I needed to eat I ate a lot right so it's like totally my fault that she was you know anyway so we were kind of in that rut and that's just the way it was right it's okay we ate we ate lot we ate vegetables lots of vegetables which is good and um and one of the dishes that we ate a lot, the Rachel version of that dish is, just got put in the oven, so you'll get to try it out for our Mother's Day potluck. But it made me think about the whole idea of this getting in a rut, you know? Like, we get in these habits or practices or whatever you want to call it in our lives. Uh-oh. Um, and sometimes that's helpful and sometimes it's not so helpful. You know, when it came to dinner, when I was a kid, we ate, so there you go. It worked out okay. <laughs> but what about if our needs are not being met by that rut? Because we can also get in the same, the rut of, you know, eating a pint of ice cream every night. I mean, you probably all are smart enough not to do that, but I, it's happened, right? You get in that habit of doing whatever it is that you're doing and it doesn't work out so well. So the question is, is when we get into something, we realize we're doing kind of the same thing over and over again. Are the needs being met? That's a question. Are we moving forward? Are we moving towards our goals? Is this helping us get where we need to be? And, and are, what are the feelings involved? Because sometimes, wait, depending on what we're, we're doing, it could be complicated. So, um, and you know, the th other thing is, is once we've created that, that neural network or whatever we want to call it, where we've created that pattern of this is what we do, it's so much easier to keep doing it, right? So much easier to just stay on the same. So not this winter, but the winter before, our family joined the gym and I started, I discovered this class called Pio. And if you've been around me at all, you've heard me talk about Pio and how wonderful it is, blah, 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 blah. And so I started going um, like every Monday and every Friday because that's when it's offered at my, my gym, almost every Monday and Friday. And so I did that all the way up until the end of last April, most, almost every Monday and Friday. And then I was out of town for a week and a half. Ruh row. And, <laughs> and I don't know why I didn't get back into it when I came back. I don't remember exactly. I had some sort of not real excuse. <laughs> Has anybody else ever had a not real excuse? Um, so I had some sort of not real excuse. I don't know whether because we just done the Nehemiah retreat and I was sore or I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to do, I, whatever. It was here, right? Okay. So, um, so I didn't get back into it, and then, you know, I was like, oh, maybe it was, I'm going to be out of town again, and I have to get up to the, what, whatever. Yeah, okay. So, didn't do it, didn't do it. It was summertime, I was going for walks and hikes, and that was a good enough excuse, right? And then August rolled around, and um, we were all kind of trying to get back on the wagon, so to speak, and so I got, I went back to class. I got back into it. I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And here's the thing. When I get done with Pio class, I am totally wiped out, but I am fired up. I feel strong and powerful and like, you know, it's great, right? But for some reason, I just was like, oh, no, 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 no. So I get back into it, I go away for three weeks between regional conference and going to Europe come back, I'm right back on it. This time I didn't let that be a pretend excuse, right? 
get back on it. Da, 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 da. And this this last week, you know, I've been away again. I can make up with the same excuse like I did last week. No, back into it. So, you know, those patterns that we, you know, once it's that pattern and then somebody says, oh, you want to do something, it's like Wednesday, uh, Monday or Friday night. I'm kind of like, yeah, well, we got pile class. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they want to do something really shiny and fun, and I'm like, but Pio class, I want to go sweat. Um, and so it's all of that just to say how easy it is to get in the habit of doing something that really is helpful for us, that works for us, and how easy it is to stop because we've made up an excuse, don't have time, whatever, don't, not strong enough, whatever. And how easy it really is to actually get back in the habit once you realize it's something that's working for you. Sometimes it's easy to get back in the habit. Sometimes it takes a little work. So I was I was looking about spiritual practice and you know, we're kind of wussy as far as like what we talk about as spiritual practice. Did you know like Buddhist monks, they get up and they, and they meditate and chant for two hours in the morning before they even get around to eating breakfast. And then they eat breakfast and they do some other stuff and then they come back and do some more prayer. They've got like five or six hours of meditation, chanting, and things like that in their daily schedule. Some real stuff right there, yeah. And the same is true for people. I looked up the Dalai Lama's schedule. When he's, you know, at home, even the Dalai Lama, who's a kind of a busy guy, still got five hours of meditation, chanting, and spiritual practice in his daily schedule. Because even though he's got a busy schedule, it doesn't take away from that time of spiritual practice. Just saying there might be something to be learned from that. And I looked up a couple of other faith traditions and people in faith tra their faith traditions, and you will see a similarity in that part of that practice doesn't change because you're busy or doesn't change because you've got other things to do. The spiritual practice part stays the same. The part of flexibility comes somewhere else. And so, um, so I was thinking about um, Ramadan, because Ramadan starts this week. And um, Bill just mentioned to me the other day, he was saying something about, um, you know, the Muslims have a practice of praying five times a day, which I think is just a great practice. The idea that we would remember to stop and pray five times a day. And you know, they're not doing it for hours and hours and all like the Buddhist monks are. It's a shorter, much shorter prayer, but it's a time to stop and remember and become centered. That's a good practice. That's a really good practice. And just, and here's the thing, like any practice, we can just sort of phone it in, just sort of do it without doing it, or you can do it with all your heart, right? So, like, my mom sort of phoned in dinner. <laughs> and then other people's moms probably did it with all their heart, right? And probably somewhere in the middle. And our spiritual practice can be the same way, right? So, if we want it to really make a difference in our lives, our daily experience, and our long-term experience of life, then we probably want to do less of phoning it in and more of really engaging in it, right? And so... As with the five, five times a day prayer practice that the Muslims practice every day of the year, that we're also moving into this Ramadan time, which is a time of fasting, right? And so there's also something really great to be learned from that because sometimes when we are stuck in a rut of maybe a, a habit we wouldn't like to continue or not doing it, we need some sort of interrupter. Right, so maybe if we're not doing such a great job keeping up with taking care of ourselves, it could be could be spiritual practice, meditation, prayer. It could be 
food related, it could be exercise related, all sorts of different ways that we take care of ourselves. Sometimes we fall into a rut of not of going the easy route instead of the, the best route. And we know this, right? So we need some sort of interrupter. You know, maybe we go to, we go on a retreat and that sort of like kind of reboots the system, right? Or we go and, you know, say, okay, this week, I'm only, you, know, you buy all the healthy food and that's all you have in the house. So you have a reboot time, a re dump. And so that's what a fast, a time of fasting can be. It doesn't have to be about following the rules because these are the rules. This is what we have to do. But it's really about a time of devotion. And so if we find ourselves <laughs> falling off the wagon, so to speak, of staying true to what we need to do for ourselves, we can maybe take, it's time to get some, get really serious enough to help kind of get us back in the, back um, in the habits that we want to be creating. One of the things I've enjoyed, you know, we've, I've recently got a Fitbit and it helps me just be, kind of keep an eye on where I'm at, what's going on, you know? And with that, it helps me I might tweak my behavior a little bit and be like, oh, I need to go move around a little bit more because it'll tell you if you haven't had a certain amount of steps every hour. So you get to the end of the hour and it says, you haven't hit 250 steps today, this, this hour, and you're like, oh, okay. You can run around a little bit. But it's good because you keep the blood moving, right? So when I'm here, I actually walk up and down the platform, so I'm getting some steps in too. <laughs> um, and uh, so sometimes it's good to have that little interrupter and sometimes it's great to have something outside, you know, a little bell on your phone, a little something to help remind you for your spiritual practice or your physical practice or whatever it is that you need to be reminded of. So even though I, I thought my mom's spaghetti and her macaroni and cheese, vegan macaroni and cheese and baked potatoes, which are the, some of the meals we had on rotation <laughs> we're pretty good um, and we didn't say not that again so it could be easy to go that way when we find that we're saying we're in a rut and we're going not that again did I really do that again that's our time to ask yourself is it time for a change if we go oh, did I really do that gosh I can make a different choice. Jeez. Okay, it's time for a change. So we once we decide it's time that we might want to make a change, all we need to do is throw an interrupter in there. Let ourselves get back on track. Say, hey mom, why don't we go out for dinner? <laughs> and then we take a step. Whatever that step is, we take a step. Today. Not tomorrow, not next week today. Whatever the step is, that's the best way to get back in a new rut. Right? Yes. All right. 